Welcome back to the train station. Uh, I'm happy to have you here. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to teach your dog to not pull on leash. And I'm not just talking about, you know, walking in formal position at your side. I'm talking about any time. And we have a skill that we call the, uh, it's it's a, it's an informal sort of skill. We, we use the terms with me or this way. We call it leash respect. And uh, you'll figure out why we call it that really quickly. And you'll also uh, figure out how to teach it to your dog. In tonight's video, we're going to show you a couple of ways, uh, you know, the starting uh, lesson as well as the progressions for the uh, exercise. I want to welcome you guys as you jump in here on the chat. We are uh, busy, busy at work here in the train station. I've added a couple little features to this uh, show that I'm going to try out. Not totally sure they're going to work, but I'm pretty excited to try <laughs> them out. Hopefully they do work, but for those of you who are just joining, and even if you're joining on the replay, you know, we, we'd love to have, have the conversations with you guys that are here live. We'd love to answer your questions, but uh, for anybody who's watching, this one's for you. If you're watching this on the replay, <laughs> welcome to the train station. Uh, now, Kale, who would you say is our dog that might was the most difficult to teach this skill, to teaching them to not pull on their leash? Mm, Grand Slam. Grand Slam was? Yeah. I would Why say. Do you say that because he wants to go everywhere as fast as he possibly can, and because he listens so well, yeah, he is rarely on a leash. So that when we do put him on a leash, it's not like a normal practiced thing. Sure, I have to make a special effort to work on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and what I lo this is one of. Would you agree with my answer? I, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Um, I think what the, one of the best parts about this skill is that it just applies to everyday activities yes. with your dog, and it's so helpful for this the little things we often uh, sort of joke in classes about imagine you're carrying a tray of coffees if you're canadian maybe mm -hmm. you have four double doubles in your hand <laughs> i don't even know what you're carrying but you don't want your dog pulling in that instance or maybe yeah. you know you're holding a baby in one arm and you've got your dog on leash in the other you know all of these situations it's such a functional skill and that's why i'm pretty excited to talk about it tonight with you guys it's something that's really um, apparent or obvious when you yeah. are um, with a dog that does not have any idea about leash respect totally. because it makes the management of them a lot more challenging especially like it's not winter anymore but it was very close and just winter not too long ago and it used to give me a heart attack seeing people walking their dogs that were pulling like across sheets of ice and stuff sure. you can just imagine it it you know going sour pretty quickly um, but the other thing that that teaches that the dogs learn when they learn leash respect is just basic respect for you as well. If yeah. they can, um, you know, be focused on you or be aware of you enough that they can keep their leash loose and not pull on you, that also is going to help your overall control, your verbal control, your relationship, the respect your dog has for you. So there's actually a, a bigger ticket that happens other than just teaching a dog that to uh, to not pull on the leash. Yeah, and you know what's really cool is this exercise can help your dog to walk in that heel position because mm -hmm. you're making it very clear to them that pulling on a leash isn't uh, an acceptable behavior. So if you are working on any of those movement, whether it's formal or informal with your dog and they're pulling on leash, then this is going to be a great episode for you. Mm -hmm. Now we've arrived at train station time, so uh, I think it's time to do our intro. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to teach your dog not to pull on leash ever. I'm Ken Steep. I'm Cal McCann. Welcome back to McCann Dogs. So what I find really cool about this uh, one, I, I've worked on something uh, in the last little bit, uh, and I've got an exciting, Kale, Kale just noticed, I want to thank all, all of our super chatters from uh, last week, anybody that donated, I want to show you what we got. We added a little flare to the train station. Oh. You see that little thing there? We got some... Kongs, different sizes. I think that's the uh, Puppy Kong. We've got the Senior Kong, the Tough Chewer Kong, and then that's that's like a Kong. King uh, Kong. Yeah, that is the King Kong. <laughs> um, I want to say hello to... I'm impressed that you can put your finger in. Sure yeah, I, it's that. a skill. Oh, you got to go the skill. opposite way. Yeah. It's hard. Not for me. Um, I want to say hello to everybody who's jumping in on the chat. Uh, Jacqueline, Master V Drumming, Sherilyn, Danessa, Nick, Jessica, Life of Finn, Deborah, Alice, uh, Fear Fathom Gaming, um, ja uh, and, mo and more. Karen, Tutor J, I, I could go on. Uh, I always like when Tutor J shows up because there's going to be a lot of tooting in this. <laughs> 
Uh, and it's just an opportunity for me to toot the train whistle. Tuna um, Jay says that their puppy just graduated from his puppy class oh, today. Oh, congratulations. Proud mama. Yeah, that's very exciting. Awesome. Good. Congratulations. Well, if your puppy just passed puppy classes, then this is going to be a good skill for you. As yeah. your puppy gets bigger, it's so helpful to not have your dog pull on leash. And uh, I see Danielle says, I use a gentle leader and my dog still pulls. And part of that, this exercise is going to be helpful for you, mm -hmm. uh, Danielle, because, um, you know, uh, the uh, piece of equipment you use, it's just a way to communicate with your dog. It gives you a little bit more leverage or whatever, but you still need to have yeah, great time. It doesn't timing. necessarily mean it's going to fix things. There's some training and some For technique sure. and things that go along with any any piece of equipment that you use, but also with the gentle leader. Absolutely. Um, our question of the day. Let's see here. Question of the day is, uh, and I. so this time uh, I want you to type four question marks if you're answering the question of the day. Sometimes the chat gets going so quickly that it's hard to see all the mm -hmm. comments, but uh, that way I'll be able to pick it out really easy. But, but, but does your dog pull when you're, even when you're standing still? You know, do you find that your dog is pulling on leash, whether you're walking or you're just hanging out? I'd love to know because we can sort of cater this talk mm -hmm. a little bit more to you guys. Now, something we do every week and uh, you guys seem to like it. I see some people are already jumping in on, on uh, what we're about to do. And I love seeing that you guys know mm -hmm. what the train station is all about. But I have something really special that I'm working on and I'm hoping it's going to work. So you know what time it is. It's time for roll call. And this fun graphic goes across oh, the screen. Oh my gosh. This is a surprise for Kale. Now, that this, is that's me ridiculous uh, i'm just driving the training train your body looks a lot bigger than the train <laughs> well it, maybe, <laughs> maybe it is it was an extra small train but i want to know where you guys are joining us from where are you joining the train station from and uh you know uh, i i i'm i'm always excited because we get stuff from all over the world and it's yeah. uh it's really really cool to see uh people that are jumping in from all over the place. Also, some people that are really local. You know, somebody mentioned that they were here from Hamilton uh, not oh, yeah. that long ago, yeah. which was pretty cool. And that's where uh, our training Michigan, facility is. Michigan, that's not too far away. Yeah, we see uh, North Carolina, Texas, Kentucky, uh, Virginia, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Tacoma. Oh, yeah, Lancaster, yeah. Awesome. Look at all you guys. Philadelphia. New Hampshire. We have a trainer coming from Philadelphia. Saskatchewan. That's awesome. We've got Indiana. Georgia. Very cool. Wow, look at these guys. Hazel Green, Alabama. Somebody from Maine, Connecticut. Saskatchewan. And I see some of you guys are answering that question of the day. Awesome. So I appreciate you doing that. That's really, really helpful. Um, Athens. And we're going to, if this is your first time, oh, there's someone from England. I know you're staying up really late, uh, Ocean Eyes. So thank you for joining us. Yeah, I think us. it's like 1 in the morning or 1.30 or Keller something. And Keller B is joining from Malaysia. So it's interesting, all these different places that people are joining us from. So let's get into it. Uh, we don't want to keep, um, who was it, uh, Ocean Eyes up too late. I know it's, it's probably like 1.30 maybe there mm -hmm. in England. So, uh, and I see SD Cruiser joining us from San Diego. He says the best city around. SD Cruiser is a long time train station visitor. So uh, thanks for joining us. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about uh, when do we start some of this leash respect. Now we're going to refer to this exercise as leash respect because we really want our dogs to understand that, um, to respect the leash. Right. We really want them to understand the it's their responsibility. It. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk about this a little bit. Like when we would introduce it to our puppies or, or, or our dogs. Yeah. So when they're baby puppies, quite honestly, we don't really focus too much on leash respect because we're trying to you know, develop some other skills. But once the dog gets, um, you know, six months or so, we really start to work on the concept of the puppy um, establishing some leash respect. And, and to make, make it simple... Uh, we teach the dogs that to some extent it's their responsibility to keep the leash loose so that uh, we don't have to you know, be doing the work all of the time. Um, and there's a couple different ways that we approach it. But when we're first beginning, we try to build a lot of value for the dog moving with us on a loose leash and teaching them that when the leash has slack in it, that it's really important. And um, it's pretty common for dogs to sort of follow their handler when they're young. Um, but what a lot of people don't realize is that when they're teaching their dog something new, that the handler or the human should be making a special effort to keep the leash loose. A lot of um, inexperienced trainers, sometimes experienced trainers, yep. uh, do a lot of their training with a tight leash. And the dog learns to listen when the leash is tight. But as soon as the leash goes loose or 
the leash comes off, you have a dog that says, oh, this is a completely different feeling. Now I can kind of do whatever I want. So working with a slack leash is really, really important. Um, one of the main things that we focus on is the look of the clip of the leash. So as it's attached yeah. to your dog's collar. And we've mentioned this in other videos. Yeah, we, well, it's so important yeah. for your dog to understand when there's no tension on that leash, for you to really have those skills that can transfer off leash. Yeah, so we're looking for the clip to point down towards the floor rather than be parallel with the ground so that the, the line isn't um, too extended. So that's sort of the concept of leash respect. Um, the other sort of rule that we have for leash respect is that we don't care where the dog is in relationship to our body as long as they are within the length of the leash. So yeah. if you're wearing, if you're walking with a four foot leash or a six foot leash, or you have your dog on a 25 foot line, the dog needs to stay within that boundary so that the line that you're using or leash that you're using never goes tight. But they need, they're allowed to be in front of us. They're allowed to be on the left or the right or behind, um, that's all okay um, so that you can use it at, at any time, but they're just, they're not allowed to pull. And so that's sort of the, the concept. So obviously when you take your dog for a walk and maybe you want to be more specific with them walking on your left side or for some people the right side, we walk our dogs at the left, at the left side. The dogs need to exhibit some type of leash respect, but if I want to stop and let my dog go to the bathroom or if I want to stop and talk to someone and I don't mind that my dog sort of is a bit more casual casual around me or wants to have a little sniff or go to the bathroom, I'm not going to make my dog go to the bathroom in heel position on my left hand side. I'm going to release them and let them sort of be a little bit more casual. But that does not mean that when I release you, you can drag me to the first person that you see or pull on the leash. So that's sort of the different. We have two two commands, one that's more formal and one that's more informal. Um, and the informal one is the one we're speaking about tonight. For sure. And again, this is the one, you, this is probably one of my favorite skills to teach teach our dogs because it's so functional. Mm. I mean, you're using it all anytime your dog's on leash, whether you're walking with them in all at your time. side or not, you're always um, expecting that they have a little bit of leash respect when mm -hmm. you'll hear us refer to that a few times because, you know, we really want them to be putting a little bit of effort, you know, working a little bit to maintain that loose leash. And we'll show you really quickly in just a couple of minutes how you can set that up as a trigger so that you can get them to uh, check back in with you when they hit the end of that leash. I wonder if we can maybe start by just showing the, the beginning. Yeah, I think I also just want to start off by saying that our McCann method of dog training, we like to start off with anything new that we teach the dog. We like to start off in a way that the dog is doing the behavior that we want successfully over and over and over and over again so that we can give them as much positive feedback as we possibly can. So typically if we're teaching something new, we're going to sort of hold, um, hold our dog's hand a little bit. We're going to help them through. We might use a bit of food to help them or we might use the leash to help them um, but basically we want to set them up so that they're not making any mistakes so um, I, I'm saying that because a lot of people will say well of course they're going to not pull if you're holding food um, but what we don't want to do is set our dogs up to fail where we have to you know give them negative feedback we want to try to avoid that unless absolutely necessary so um, keep in mind that we do have a transition we start off with positive feedback getting the dog to repeat the behavior and this is least respect to teaching them to come when they're called to teaching them to sit to teaching them to walk backwards it doesn't matter how simple or how complex this is the order in which we do it so we teach them to do it correctly first and we repeat that then we'll build in maybe some distractions or we'll wean off of the food a little bit we'll add distance we'll add duration whatever it might be and then we'll slowly move into the testing phase and when we're talking about leash respect the testing phase might be when i'm taking my dog out for a walk around distractions sure that's testing Testing the dog. I'm putting them in a situation where anything could happen and my dog could do it really well or they could do it really poorly. So um, just to give you a little bit of a background that will sort of set up what we're going to do maybe today a little yeah, bit Yeah, you know easily. what? I, I still have that image queued up for uh, our last. If you were here last yeah, week, we I talked about the train the principle. Thing. And uh, so why don't I just put it on the screen right now? Uh, I've got to take down a couple things. But so Kale talked a little bit about how we set our dogs up to be successful. And, and, a, and a huge part of that is following uh, this infographic. We talk about teach, then we rehearse, then we add distractions, then we can increase expectations, and then we can try new places. And new places also include some maintenance exercises. That really strips it down to like the bare 
uh, minimum information. But if you think about making sure that your dog really understands a behavior with whatever method you're teaching, whether you're capturing the behavior, shaping, uh, luring, whatever, um, your dog has a thorough understanding of what you're asking of them. They can be successful. Then you Got to try different spots. Maybe you go in the backyard and rehearse it a little bit. Um, and, and then you move on to adding distractions, making it a little bit more challenging. So we're going to talk about uh, the loose leash, uh, how to teach your dog to um, you know, really pay more attention to you on a loose leash. And uh, I'm going to go to camera two here in just a second. And I think uh, I, now I left, I left our studio mic on for like the past week. I'm hoping it works and I'll watch the uh, audio very closely. But if there's a brief moment of silence, that's my fault and I'll fix it. Okay, ready to go? Yeah. Okay, we're ready to head on over to the train station. I love that whistle. Okay, so oh, we're going to talk about... One sec, one sec. Stand by. Hey. Okay, there we go. Here. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about leash respect right now, and I'm just going to sort of show you. So first things first, now that my leash is on, I expect her to stay within a range that the leash doesn't go tight. So I'm just gonna sort of move around a little bit and I want you to watch to see what she does. Now, um, if she pulls on her leash at any time, I'm gonna give her a reminder by giving the leash a couple tugs that she's not allowed to pull. And if she does a good job and she moves with me and pays attention, then I'm going to yes and then reward her generously for making a good choice. So just for the sake of showing you what it looks like, I'm gonna test her a little bit and I'm not going to give her any commands for this. I'm just gonna move around quietly and I'm gonna let her do all the work and hopefully she shows you a good job. So if I move this way, if I move this way, back up a little bit, maybe I'll go over here. Good girl. So do you see how she's making a special effort to keep the leash loose? Good girl, Munker, that's very nice. Yes, if I stop, she sort of hangs out with me. If I bend over to tie my shoe, if I pick up her poo, she just sort of, she just defaulted into a sit, but she just sort of hangs out around me. And this is what we call leash respect. She does not have to stay at in any position. She just has to keep this leash loose. Good girl, Funker. Very nice. Now, when we're first beginning this exercise, we actually just start out with stationary leash respect. And that is actually part of the uh, question of the day today was does your dog sh uh, pull on the leash even when you're standing still? Um, it is pretty common if a dog doesn't have any leash respect, it doesn't matter whether you're sitting, standing, walking, running, they're just gonna pull in all those situations. But for some dogs, with you standing still, it's sometimes easier for dogs to be successful. As soon as you start walking, most dogs are going to get distracted and pull. So when you stand still, sometimes it's a bit easier. So that's why we start in that manner. So if I'm going to begin this, we actually sometimes begin sitting in a chair so that your dog's often close. If you sit down, what most dogs will do is they'll come over to you and just sort of check you out a little bit to get a little bit of engagement. When you're first starting, you can hold several pieces of food in your hand, but I'm not going to put them on her nose. I'm going to kind of hide them away, and I'm just going to stand up and see what she does. Yes. If she doesn't go anywhere, I'm going to yes and reward her. Okay, good girl. I'm going to sit back down again. I'm going to stand up. Yes, good girl. She's choosing to hold a sit. If your dog was to stand while you do this, that is 100% um, acceptable, not to worry. So that was successful. So if that she can do that, I might add a couple steps. I might walk forward a few steps. Yes. Walk back. Yes, good girl. I might step this way. Yes. I might step this way. Yes, good girl. Yeah, so each step that I'm taking. Yes, good. Yes, I'm yes, I'm rewarding her for choosing to move with me. Now, you may notice that when I feed my dog, I'm feeding in a way that she has to pay attention to me. We see a lot of people do this. Yes and reward their dog for looking in a different direction, especially if there's distractions over there. If I'm feeding my dog for engaging with that distraction, I don't want her to think that that thing is what's causing the reward or that the rewards are magically falling out of the sky into her mouth. I want her to know that the rewards come from me. So if I move this direction and she makes an effort to move with me, yes. I'm gonna reward in a way that the food is delivered between the two of us, making sure she knows that I'm the, the deliverer of the goods, right? 
good girl. Now, as long as that's going successfully, we don't really have to give the dog any negative feedback now. I'm practicing in a place where there's no distractions, there's really nowhere to look from uh, than me. Um, so this is what I would start off with, basic concept of leash respect in situations where my dog is making very, very good efforts. If your dog was a bit distracted, you might add more body language than what I'm doing to really help the dog. So I might have more food in my hand and I might start integrating some commands to help her be successful. And we would use something very casual like with me or stay close. I use the word close with my dog. So if I'm walking them, especially if they're off leash, I actually had to do this today on a walk. I was walking them and I had to go through a parking lot to get to my car. My dogs were all off leash. So I asked all of them to come back and I said close and they just sort of walked within about a six foot range. They were all off leash, but because they know close so well, I could walk from you know where I was through the parking lot to my car and keep the dog very safe. So again, I'm gonna show you if you need to give your dog a bit more help. So here's some more food. I might say with me, yes, with me this way. Good girl, here, come this way, yes. With me, good. Right here, with me, yes. Here, good girl, that's it, with me. Yay, this me. Yeah, good girl, yes. So do you see how much more animated I was? I was talking to the dog, I'm bending over, brought, drawing her in. If you move like that, the likelihood of your dog following you is much greater than if you're sort of standing and moving very rigidly without helping the dog. So start off by making it easier for them before you start any adding anything more difficult. And I think maybe we'll stop there and move on and then we sure. can talk about Yeah, there's the a couple things for then... sure. A couple things I wanted to touch on and let's head uh, back on over here from the train station. Um, Debbie Sloan asks a great question. Will you demonstrate with a dog that isn't so well trained already? And, <laughs> and, and the reality is, Debbie, that we're trying to, we're teaching you. So um, we'll show you what's gonna, what to do when things go right, what to do when things go wrong, and how to sort of manage uh, your puppy, your young dog in training so that you can be successful. We can show you a few mistakes with Ken sure. acting as the dog. Um, unfortunately, we can't show you that today because all of our dogs are trained to have least respect. Yeah. So they're not going to make uh, any mistakes. Yeah, but yeah. again, coming back to what I said before, if you're doing the first couple steps of this training correctly, your dog is not going to be pulling. And if they right. are, that means that Maybe you're making it too challenging. Think about the distractions that are around you. Uh, think about what type of reward do you have? Do you have something that's high value enough? So when you start off, you need to start off with a lot of success, and then we'll talk into how to make it a little bit more challenging. But um, I will show you with Ken so that we can- Yeah, so that, that we, we can, can intentionally that make some mistakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, the other thing, oh, actually, you know, let's just jump into some of these questions because I see lots of great questions coming in here. Um, so for the question of the day, I noticed I, I knocked down the uh hang on one sec i knocked down the uh, banner but the question of the day is um does your dog uh, pull on leash even when you're not moving um and i've seen some great answers and, and I've seen. i have seen some great answers let's see what we've got here Samika B says, yes, even when standing still. Yeah, and that's not that uncommon until you teach some of these exercises mary, Will mary williams says yes she pulls when i'm standing uh, Karen says only when he wants, only when he sees a person he wants to greet. And we can talk a little mm. bit about that as well. That's not so much of, I, I mean, it's it, least respect is definitely included in that, but you can train that skill totally separately, um, nice for your dog. Um, uh, let's see, Melinda Miller. Good girl. Uh, Danielle R says he needs to smell and eat everything on walks. He pulls to try to get the rabbits. Yeah. And that's something it's sometimes it's hard to prepare for some of these things. We talked a couple of episodes ago about, um, when you have that young dog in training, teaching them to walk in at your side, teaching them to walk formally. And then we talked about how you want to focus on being really successful for short periods of time. Maybe you choose two light stands that you're going to, or, you know, uh, light posts that you're going to be really critical of your dog's position, rewarding them a bunch, and then you can break it off. Those times in between when you're insisting on that great attention, that really formal walking is when you're going to lean on this skill of the leash respect so that your dog isn't pulling you down the street when you give them that opportunity. And we don't want to say that you should like isolate your dog completely until they have no training, but I think the most common problem that I see people make is that they put their dogs in situations where the dog is going to fail and then they get upset or angry with the dog but really what's happened is you've put them in a scenario where they're, they're just not ready for it because they haven't had the training so if you're taking your dog for big walks around the property or, 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 
That's, I say that because that's what I do. Yeah. Um, around, you know, your street and they spend the majority of that walk pulling you, you know, to everybody that they see and um, jumping on people that they see and sniffing everything and being, you know, pulling on the leash. You really shouldn't be walking that dog at this time until you can have more understanding on how to hold the leash, how to redirect the dog, how to reward the dog properly, um, how to build a foundation for that exercise that you need in order to go there. So, um, you know, if things aren't going well, think about what you can do to make the exercise easier so that you can teach your dog how to do it because dogs unfortunately don't come trained yeah for <laughs> we sure. have to start at the basics and then we have to kind of work through that and as we mentioned like that that was the first step you're really going to load this up so that your dog can be successful it's not fair to take them out into a challenging environment when they're really not likely to be successful so mm-hmm. begin this in a you know a really quiet place begin by being really energetic and loud and exciting and really um insist on attention from your dog uh it's voluntary but it's because you're so much fun yeah uh, alice asks uh, can this be applied to a two year uh, to a two year old rescue dog? Absolutely. Yep. Any, any Absolutely. Dog, yeah. Any age. Lots of dogs of different ages for, for sure. sure. Yeah, yeah, as long as you're consistent. Um, Ocean Eyes says, I use a halty, but my German Shepherd hates it and is forever trying to take it off. And that's something that we, so let's talk just briefly. Now I don't really like the halty brand uh, versus the gentle leader. There's a different leverage. The halty nose slides a little bit doesn't too much. Doesn't fit very well. It doesn't fit very well. But um, there's or a couple. very well. <laughs> let's, uh, what, a couple of tricks that we use for gentle leaders getting a dog used to them. What might uh, Ocean uh, do? Quickly, we do positive association with a, the with a gentle leader, such as put it on during mealtime. Put it on, let the dog eat. The moment they're done eating, take it off right away. Uh, with my border collie that I used it with, I would put it on and play frisbee with her, put it on and snuggle with her on the couch. I didn't just put it on in situations where I was going to train her or like make her be obedient. I put them on in situations where she was really loving what she was doing. Um, and I also didn't allow her to fuss at it. So if she was trying to get it off, I would lift up on it, tell her, knock it off, leave it. And when she would stop, I would put uh, uh, loosen the leash and then I would praise her calmly and then I would reward her after a few moments if she was sort of sitting and accepting it a little bit more easily. Yeah. Um, I would, you know, say that my dog does not love having the gentle leader on for sure, but she accepts it and she uh, works with it on um, happily once we're doing something that she really enjoys, um, which is everything. <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, yeah, you just have to take the time, make sure that you're not just slapping it on when you need it. Take some time to really work some um, uh, situ- situations where you're teaching them to be a cu- become, I cannot speak right now, <sighs> become accustomed to it. Yeah. To now, let's get into, let's jump back into the questions really quickly because I, I just want to, um, someone mentioned, uh, Christina Boyd uh, mentions, cause this is really appropriate for right now. Uh, Christina says, okay, so I have a pup in one of my classes that's not food motivated at all, not even cheese or peanut butter gets her attention what can you do in that instance to motivate them to succeed so if we had this question in class the very first two things that i would ask the student um and if they were in front of me i could probably answer one of them on my own yeah number one what is your dog's weight like um are they overweight most dogs are um and secondly what's your feeding schedule are you meal feeding or are you free feeding if a dog is not motivated by food, typically most people are free feeding the dog, which means you put the food down and you sort of let the dog graze and eat when they want to all throughout the day. And that's um, not really a great way to feed feed a dog uh, for health reasons, but also for, for training because you sort of devalue the use of food because it's just something that they get all the time and it just doesn't become as important anymore. Um, so changing the dog to meal feeds, so put it down for you know 10, 15 minutes and whatever they don't eat put it up from there. Um, I will also, um, I will also um, make sure the dog is in a confined space so that they can't wander off and get distracted. Um, and then the other thing that you can do is use the food, if they are into into eating their meals, use that food to do some of the training. And then lastly, consider why they don't want to take food in that situation. Right. Um, is the dog stressed? Is the dog overly distracted and just doesn't care about you in the moment? Um, if the dog is stressed, then you might want to consider changing the environment a little bit to make it a little bit easier for the dog. And, and something you can always use and it, you, know, you don't want to overface a dog especially a dog that's worried and we're getting a little bit deep into this uh, yeah. answer but um you can you always have your voice with you you know you really support the dog when they start to move and things like that but really take a look at why the dog uh, doesn't want the food you know is it getting too much food already is it the free feeding is such an important thing uh, maybe try a different treat um again change the environment those are some pretty 
really important first steps to take before you go any deeper into uh, why the dog might not, not want the food. Um, so let's go, uh, Diane, Roy, really quickly. Your dog makes such good eye contact. How do you train for this? We actually have a video on the channel, um, how to teach your dog to, to look me. at you. Yeah. And, and that's part of it. The reward position. Kale talked about making sure she's always rewarding from her. She's not rewarding funky monkey when she's faced away. Um, little things like that go mm -hmm. a long, long way. Really, really helpful. Okay. Do you want to jump into, um, OSD cruiser or uh, Daryl and Luna have uh, answered. Uh, we struggle with it sometimes. Well, where we struggle sometimes is that owners wanting us to play with their one dog. They'll uh, let, let their leash go. And it's unfair to Luna. We have to, um, she's, she's still on hers and they ask her to wait. And again, that, that might come down to, uh, you know, a communication issue. I know I would, I would do my best Stay to away avoid from the areas yeah. where the dogs, people are going to be letting their yeah. dogs off leash. You don't want to undo all your hard work, uh, Daryl, because I know how much effort you put in and it's um it's frustrating when people aren't respectful of, of your dog's space especially <coughs> excuse me when your dog's on leash it can be a real struggle yeah i will say like there are times where um i will walk my dogs to the park and then when i get there there's you know several other families that have their dogs there and because i don't trust them them and their dog's control often i turn around and i walk home and then i'm sad yeah. <laughs> but i i just won't put my dogs in those scenarios where my dogs are trying to make such a special effort to be obedient to me and to listen and we're trying to do things together that i don't want them getting interrupted or scared or chased or worried by somebody else that doesn't have control over their dog so just you can't always control it no. I, I realize that but tr try your best to if you can okay let's move to the next step yeah, um, I think I need you. Though. Okay. All right, we're going to go head on over to the train station because okay. uh, I'm a much poor, more poorly yeah. behaved dog than Funky Monkey might be. Um, let's give this a try. Um, let's, uh, because I've got to leave this, I've got to set it up to go to okay. camera two. Yeah, and before I leave, I certainly wouldn't forget to say, uh, let's head on over to the train station. <laughs> Now, let me step back a little bit. You're a tall dog. Yes, I am. Oh, he just wants that fan and that chair. So it's not a distraction for you guys. Okay, <clears throat> so the next thing that we would do with the dogs, once they can do some stationary and some minor movement with a lot of help from us. So when I was showing you with Funky before, um, <clears throat> I was moving, I was talking, I was feeding like every couple steps. The next progression would be to take away some of those added things. And it could be also to work with some minor distractions around me. So um, I might take a toy. Ken loves to play with this big oh, bee. Yeah. Um, I might take the toy and put the toy on the ground. And then again, I might have a little bit of food in my hand. I'm gonna have my leash gathered in my hand. And now I'm gonna be faced with two possible scenario, uh, scenarios. The first one is that, and hopefully this is what happens, is my dog exhibits me good leash respect. So if I move in different directions, he moves in a way that my leash stays loose. And if that's the case, I'm going to yes and reward him. But when I yes and reward him, I'm going to get, make an effort to turn him in towards me to feed him with attention. If I feel any tension on the leash, though, I'm now going to respond a bit differently. So when we first start out, we're only giving them positive feedback. So if he got distracted, I could use some food and redirect him back. But I don't want to be doing that forever because I don't want to have to carry around treats with me all the time. I don't want him working for me only because he knows he's going to get fed. I want him to learn that it's kind of his responsibility. So if I feel any tension on the leash, I'm going to respond to that by giving a couple pulses on the leash. I'll just show you. So if the leash is tight, I'm going to pulse. I'm just going to do it in normal time first so you can see. Ah, the boy! And I'm going to do that action on the leash until my dog turns around. What is extremely important about this technique is we're not popping to hurt the dogs in any way. And I'm also not wanting to physically pull and drag my dog in my direction. I'm basically giving a bit of an attention getter. So if Ken was a human, which he is, <laughs> and I needed <laughs> to get his watch. attention and he was ignoring me, which sometimes happens in our no. lovely marriage, no. uh, I would say, hey, Ken, and I might give him a little tap on the shoulder and naturally he's going to turn around to me. You know what she never does, though, is when she does tap me on, on the shoulder, she's, go, yay, all right. <laughs> she doesn't do that. But that's what you want to be doing with your dog because 
because remember, there's something that they find of value uh, in the distance, maybe very nearby, but there's something that's distracting them. So you need to be the most important, exciting thing in the room when you get that attention. Okay, continue yeah. on. So anyways, I just want to talk to you about the technique because it's not very uh, easy yeah. if you've never done it before. So let's imagine our dog's head height is like my pocket height. So if my leash is too tight, if I'm going to do a good little pulse on the leash, I have to first create a little bit of slack. And then from there, I can pull and release. And we can't tell you how hard to do it on the dog because every dog is different. But basically, you want to do it firm enough that your dog turns a lot. So if you try it and your dog like completely ignores you, you might want to try it a little bit harder. Um, it's always smart to start soft first and then progressively try it a bit firmer until you find the one that works. What you don't want to do is scare the dog with this. And like Ken had mentioned, if you do the little pop and your dog does turn and give you a reaction, you need to balance that little negative reminder with something that's super exciting and positive. So your dog says, oh my gosh, every time I go and pull, I get a little pop on my leash and I don't really like that. But every time I turn around, you're smiling and you're playing and like this seems like a way more fun place to be. So we'll just show you a couple of scenarios. Maybe Ken will be a good dog first. So I might say, okay, with me. And I might move this way a little bit. If he chooses, I'm going to yes or reward with me. Yes, good boy. I'm going to yes or reward. I might go towards the toy. Come this way. I might say, with me. Yes. And if he moves away, I'm going to be yes and rewarding him generously to do that. If I move towards the toy, however, and I back away or he drags me towards the toy and my leash goes tight, now I need to respond to that by doing a couple of these. Yay, good boy! When he looks back, I can back away and praise from there, okay? And I need to do those little pulses on the leash until he turns and looks at me. So if your dog's just a little bit distracted, you might only have to do one little baby one and boom, they're gonna turn around perfectly. But if there's a squirrel or a bunch of people playing with dogs, you might have to do a couple pulse, 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 pulse back away until they turn and then you better have a pretty high value reward on you um, in order to do this. Now. One last thing, when you're doing this with your dog, if you're practicing and you're finding that you're having to use the leash to get your dog to pay attention, right away you should know that that's an indication that what you're doing in that moment is too hard for the dog. So I should only have to give my dog a couple reminders and then they should be making good choices. So if they're pulling and being quite naughty, I need to consider, okay, my distraction's too hard, is the environment a little bit too much for my dog, and it might mean that I need to progress a little bit more smoothly. We wanna be doing way more reinforcement with the dog than we do any type of, of leash movement. The other thing you need to keep in mind is your timing. Like the moment, you don't wanna be waiting to see if your dog's going to respond to when that leash goes tight. So just come with me for a second. So when, if your leash, if your clip is hanging like that, the moment it gets like that, that's when you're gonna start using that the, the pulses on the leash and not like a single hard pulse it's like a tap 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 insistently until your dog turns and if you start to give up early if you're like tap 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 well listen sorry jet more even He's more gentle me really hard even more, i've been doing finger all workouts at the gym uh if, if you don't, if, was that, that well you keep poking in the same spot oh, so we'll go a different spot okay. if you tap a few times and your dog doesn't respond and then you tap a few times and your dog doesn't respond again they're going to very quickly learn that they really don't need to i'm a attention. soft nature dog so i don't need you a lot have to of be poking. insistent until you finally get their yay good girl and then really light up for them but make sure that the moment that that leash goes tight that's when you start using those pulses so that your dog learns that every time that leash goes tight it's time to check in with you um, and i think lastly is that you need to remember um that dogs learn within one second. So if your dog is pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling and, you know, five minutes later you finally get annoyed enough that you want to do something about it, keep in mind that you just allowed them to do that, that bad behavior, for lack of a better word, um, for a long time before addressing it. And that can be a little bit confusing for dogs. If sometimes they're allowed to do it or they get away with doing it, and then other times you get upset with them, sometimes they just don't know what you're asking of them. And so it's hard for them to, to do a better job. So make sure that you're being consistent across the board. And lastly, dogs learn within one second. So if your dog is pulling, it is important that you're getting after them within one second of them pulling. And sometimes the quicker you respond, sometimes allows you to be able to um, get after them much more softly because they're only pulling a little bit versus like dragging you across the, across the street. Um, 
And then lastly, if you find that you're really having trouble and your dog's really not making the gains that you want, consider the, the type of equipment that you're using, maybe switching to something like the Gentle Leader, which is the halter, the halter style that we prefer, not the Halty, we prefer the Gentle Leader. Um, or maybe snug the collar up a little tighter, have it sit a little tighter on the, higher on the dog's neck. Um, there's other options that you can do. We are not advocates of chain collars or prong collars. Um, we feel like you can have better technique and training and relationship um, in order to avoid those types of collars, but certainly something more passive like a gentle leader can help people be really successful in a much more positive way. Okay, let's jump back over to the... Uh... I look very white right now. Yeah, you're very blown my, out. My Hawaiian uh, I see some, tan is totally I see some gone. people dropping some uh, comments in the chat. Uh, a couple of them were very specifically... Thank you for doing that because you know I love to toot during the train station episodes. Um, let's jump in to answer some specific questions. Now, remember, we do these train station shows for you. So if you do have a question about your puppy training or your dog training, specifically today, let's talk about some of that loose leash training. We'd love to see it in the chat. Um, so I see some good stuff. Danielle R. says, I live in a condo, so I have to walk my dog on leash even to pee every time. Should I stop walking him while he learns nicely to walk uh, on leash? I love this question. I think it's really great, uh, that, Danielle, that you're starting to think about um, the granular, like the, the progressions and the this. steps. So what, what would you suggest to Danielle as she's trying to teach her dog to walk on an, a loose leash, but she still has to go out to, to take the dog to potty? What, what sort of exercises would you do with that dog? Um, it's hard to say you need to take the dog outside to go to the bathroom. So, um, you need to pick and choose your battles. Uh, take the dog outside, work a little bit of leash respect as you're doing, integrate some of the little pops on the leash as I was just demonstrating, and then um, you know reward often. Keep the actual walking, walking, walking to a minimum. Maybe just go to an area and just stand still and let your dog go to the washroom. And then you know after you've done that, you can do maybe a little bit of movement that's more erratic rather than, it's much harder to get a dog to walk on a leash initially when you go in a straight line. It's actually way easier to move in a more erratic behavior, erratic pattern. So left and right and forward and back because the dogs yeah. can't really predict where you're going and they're much more like, whoa, where are you going? And they want to pay attention. And then you have a better chance to reward them. So that's what I would start off with, like certainly moving with the dogs, but maybe not going on such a straight long line like a typical walk until the dog gets a better concept of what you're asking. Yeah, I, you know, I think you bring up a really important point. And uh, Kale mentioned it a little bit, but the more you move around in different directions and like if you're moving, you, maybe you take three steps uh, in one direction and then you just make a 90 degree turn and see what your dog does. As you get to this point, it's really going to test them, but it's also way more fun. You know, your dog's got to pay attention to you and you're going to mark those moments that they make the great choices uh, with you and you can reward them for that. So really, you know, keep it interesting. And as you're as you're starting to be more successful in one place, maybe you're, uh, Danielle's taking her puppy out to, to go potty, maybe she can increase the level of difficulty and set her expectations a little higher, mm -hmm. kind of like we talk about in this uh, infographic. And I, you know, I love that we can go back to that because I didn't erase it from her thing. But um yeah, it's really, really helpful to to keep it interesting for your dog. Mm. Uh, oh, no. This one here? Okay. Jessica Spade says, I have a hard time transitioning off of food. Yeah, that's a pretty common uh, issue. Um, make sure that when you're training, in addition to the food, you're also using your voice so that when the food comes off, your dog is still really used to responding to your voice and accepting praise from your voice. Um, but make sure that you're not weaning off the, the food cold turkey, just going from a bunch of food to nothing at all. Uh, when we transition off food in our classes or in our training, um, we do it very gradually. So we start to space out the, the timing in between the treats. So in the beginning, we might feed, have the food in our hands and then feed more rapidly. And then we might have in our food in the hands, but then we might feed a little bit less often. Then we might transition from having the food in our hand to the food in our pocket or our bait pouch. And we would pull the food from there, maybe again a little bit more often and then transition to a little bit less. Um, so there's a very uh, slow transition period so that the dog isn't noticing as much all while we're like controlling the environment. Um, and then uh, lastly is when you're trying to wean off of the food, um, I just had a brain fart. 
I forget where I was it's going Just talking about weaning off the food. Um, I was going to say something really important. I can't remember what it was. I, I, I didn't, uh, I missed it because I'm just trying to manage the chat really quickly. Anyways, that's the, that's the gist of it. If I remember, I'm going to. Yes. And that's how it always works. Well, I, I was, I maybe was gearing ju- up for the next maybe this thought will in jog my your mind. Memory. No, I don't remember what I was going to say. Did that help? No. Mm. I don't remember. Help me. Oh, I remember. remember I remember. Awesome I remember is. now. Um, when you're using the food, make sure that you're not doing things like walking with your hand in your pocket or walking with your hand in your bait pouch. We see a lot of people start to wean off of the food, but then the food's in their pocket, but they walk in their hands like kind of near their pocket or in their pocket. And the dogs are so smart because they start to see sort of what it looks like when you're training versus when you're a little bit more relaxed. So even if you do have food, try to... Um, have a more relaxed body posture so that it's not super obvious when it's there and then maybe when it's not there. Yeah, that's great advice. I um, don't know why that slipped my mind, but it did. It happens. I've um, been teaching for a lot of hours Melinda, today. Yes. <laughs> Melinda Miller puts, uh, says she puts constant pressure on me like uh, she wants to see what's around the next corner. Not dragging me down, just not a loose leash either. And that's part of wh- what I mentioned, uh, you know, making sure the clip of the leash is loose. And the moment it goes tight to, uh, you know, use those pulses, use those tap, tap, taps to get some attention back on you. I, it's because uh, I, I have such a remarkably strong You're like, pokey finger, I guess. I don't know. That doesn't hurt you? No, not at all. <laughs> You're a big wimp. Yeah, I actually but, am. But being consistent about that too. So don't, uh, Melinda, don't allow your dog to pull for any length of time. Sort of set this expectation that the moment the leash goes tight, that you start u- to use those pulses to get attention back on you. It's going to be really helpful. And, and especially if your dog's rehearsed it a little bit, you might need to work a little bit harder to get some attention. But when you talk about uh, that he, your, your dog's pulling to look around the next corner, maybe don't go, don't go to these places that elicit that response yet until you've put in a little bit more work on the teaching phase on teaching your dog to maintain that loose leash in a quieter environment and then you can start to go rehearse it in other places mm-hmm. you'll, you'll, you'll find that you're a little bit more successful that way um, actually the other thing is uh, when you're going to use those uh, the pulses on the leash make sure you put a little bit of slack in first because otherwise you're just sort of you're just sort of dragging the dog in the last thing you want to be doing is just pulling them back around toward you because we want it to be their decision we want to use those pulse 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 until you get that response from them those tap tap taps rather than me spinning that kale around nicer, yeah, you're welcome rather than spinning kale around I'm gonna tap 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 until she, until she looks and then I'm gonna mark that moment I really want it to be her decision to check in yeah. with me. And keep in mind, this action that we're doing on the leash, it doesn't really hurt the dog at all. Like Ken was just doing that on my hand, and it doesn't hurt at all. It just sort of gets the dog's attention, but it is important that you're popping and releasing or pulling and releasing, pulling and releasing, uh, opposed to just one constant drag. And the way that dogs work is if you pull on them, most of the time they're going to resist and kind of lean into the leash a little bit more, which is why we've learned that this pulse and release technique works so much better than and just trying to have a big tug of war with the dog. So we want to try to be, you know, calm and assertive when we're when we're teaching the dogs. Um, but technique is so important um, when you're doing this. Yeah. Um, from uh, Jacqueline Nelson, I work with my lab while I'm watching you. I just did the exercise with you. She's 17 weeks old. And ah, she did awesome. All very cool. Awesome. That's really great. We should have live stream lessons. Yeah, I know. That would be I fun. Know. Well, we sort of, we do a lot of that kind of thing for our online training. Yeah, like we, we do. do. Uh, upload videos and stuff. Um, let's see. Catherine Gruler says, hi, do I start doing this with my nine and a half week old puppy or wait till he's a little older when he's out of his crate? I have him on lead constantly. I am so happy to hear that, Catherine, that you're using your house line. And um, I think, I, yeah, I may, have post, I may have posted a, a card if it's in the top corner somewhere, if you click on it to see what the house line is all about. But um, it's really uh, such a valuable tool. So what age would you start teaching your puppy this? Well, that exercise that I showed at the very beginning of the live stream, you could do that with any age of dog and you might even just do it in your kitchen where there's not much going on pick the leash up and just feed your puppy for following with you and and staying on a loose leash what i generally don't do with a puppy of that age is i don't walk my puppies when they're that old um i exercise them in any and other ways but i don't take my young young puppies uh for um an actual walk um 
I guess I just don't know what's out there at that point, but I do lots of socialization in other ways and letting them meet people, but I'm just really specific about those types of things. But you can absolutely work on the leash respect concept when they're young. I just wouldn't be putting like a young nine week old puppy or even even older than that in a situation. I don't wanna be doing a lot of that popping on the leash right. on a baby puppy. I wanna yeah. avoid that. So I'm going to do the steps where it's a lot easier for my puppy to be successful and I mainly focused on yesing and rewarding the dog and I'm not putting them in a scenario where I'm going to have to be doing a lot of pulling on the leash quite yet. Um, they're just too young for that at that point. Yeah. So uh, I, I like this. This is a little bit off topic, but I think it's just related enough. Um, Miss Philly G says, I can't even pick up the leash and all my dogs go crazy and rush to the door. I have <laughs> They to know hide. what walk time is. Yeah. I have to hide the leashes outside. And uh, you've essentially, and this is sort of a classic dog training thing, by uh, going to get the leashes, everybody knows that it's time to go outside so it's uh, basically cue stimulus and then the reward so i want you to uh, practice we have a video on the channel teach your dog how to go to lie on their bed and relax mm -hmm. some of those self-control exercises are going to be really great for you and i for sure put uh the weight teach your dog how to wait and stay some of our stationary exercises so check those uh, in a card in the top left right hand corner right hand corner so check those videos out because those uh self building a little bit more self-control into your dogs is going to be so helpful and if you can ask them to go lie down on their bed while you go get their leashes it's just going to make your life a little bit easier and i think um it's also fun those 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 ones are so simple to train because you can sit or literally be sitting watching tv or doing something else while you're training this exercise with your dog i mean you're sort of most of your attention's on your dog but it's not something that you need to be out of your house and, and uh, in, you know plan a training session mm -hmm. on you can just do it you know on a whim um on a whim jessica Ar Arno arnobit uh, i'm currently working on weaning my dog off her gentle leader any specific tips for that we do we actually have a couple of videos specifically about weaning your dog off of the gentle leader uh, i think my last video that i created with instructor steve if you search gentle mccann dogs gentle leader you'll definitely find something and i know um there's a, a playlist in uh, one of the videos specifically is about weaning off the gentle leader so you're going to find that really helpful jessica uh Donatus D. Hi, I'm from London. I, it's 1 a.m. and we just got a new German Shepherd puppy, but our two current Chihuahuas are not so friendly with the Shepherd. What's the best way to make them be friends? And we talk about this a fair amount. We have a video on the channel that's called How to Introduce Your Puppy to Your Other Dog that's going to be really helpful for you. And just talk for briefly uh, about how we introduce our puppy to our other dogs. Um, so when we have puppies with our other dogs, we don't really introduce them very much. <laughs> we do a lot of separation until the puppy has a few little basics under them so that we can control the puppy um, around the other dogs. Now our other dogs have a lot of training so if you find that the chihuahuas um, are, are the ones that aren't listening very well you may need to make sure that you maybe have them controlled on leashes so that the, the puppies aren't um, the puppy isn't irritating the older dogs and the older dogs aren't egging on the puppy. Um, so you have a little bit more control and you may want to just try one dog at a time rather than having two dogs against the one puppy. Um, it could be maybe just a little bit overwhelming for all, all parties involved. Um, so doing it a bit more casually. We utilize our crate a lot uh, with our puppies. We also barricade and use baby gates in our house a lot with our puppies yeah. to keep the dogs separated until we can control things in a more um, calm manner. But leashes crates separation um controlled greetings is really important yep. um, you can really mess up a dog's friendships if you let them spend too much time together too early especially if they aren't getting along and there's any stress or or, or anxiety amongst any of the dogs sometimes they decide that they really don't like the dogs and that can be hard to fix so take it slow don't be in a big rush your puppy is very young at this point just focus on building a relationship between you and them and then integrate the other dogs a little bit later and that's not a quick fix answer i recognize but that one's a little bit more work but worth worth your while um craig a we kind of answered this is a three month old yeah. pup too young to use the loose leash method method yeah just a little too young yet um danielle uh, this is a walking question we just got our pup from a previous owner oops i'm gonna have to send that again 
Just got a pup from a previous owner that didn't have time for him. His greater Swiss mountain dog, and he's five months old. We've had him for two weeks. He just came to us with bad. He came to us with bad habits, and that's okay. I mean, we get lots of um, uh, adult dogs in class. Actually, my first dog that I took to train at McCann Professional Dog Trainers was a two-year-old dog, and I had given her all of the wrong information. Actually, I should probably create a video for the channel that um, talks about some like the huge mistakes I made mm-hmm. and how I had to work through them. That would probably be a good video, especially for our puppy owners. Mm-hmm. But um, as long as you're clear, consistent, and fair with all of your exercises, I mean, we have so many videos, to be honest, we have so many videos that I create on the channel that are specifically targeted at someone like you, Danielle, because Mm-hmm. Um, it, some of the things that I discovered uh, being a dog trainer for the past 10 years, some of the little tips and, and tricks are, are going to be really helpful for you to gain control of uh, your, your dog that's got bad habits. But if you're a puppy owner, it's the perfect way to set your puppy up to be successful. So uh, there's we have so many videos on the channel, but just be clear, consistent, and fair with them, and uh, you'll have them turned around in no time. Five months is not very old no, at, all, not at all, so you're ahead of the game. Don't worry yeah, about absolutely. it. Absolutely. Um, my dog is uh, Steve Ralph. My dog is fine walking until there's a distraction. Another dog, jogger, and then they pull and go a little crazy. So we did a, an exercise called Leave It, teaching your dog how to leave it. And that can be a really powerful skill for somebody like you, Steve, who, who your dog is uh, super motivated by motion or whatever the thing is. Not only can you do your uh, uh, loose leash walking training, but some of the attention on you, like teaching your dog to look at you, and super going to be going to be super helpful. Our leave it video, teach your dog to leave it. That's going to be really helpful for you in that situation. Yeah, and the other thing is, don't forget that there's other commands and skills that help your dog to be more controlled in a distracting environment. How strong is the dog's response to name on a loose leash around distractions? How well is their sit stay? on a loose leash around distractions, you can utilize some of the skills that you train your dog to do to help control them in situations that are a little bit more challenging. Um, all while, you know, of course, the leave it is, is an excellent one to start. But if the dog is behaving that way and when you ask the dog to calm down, the dog's not interested in listening to you, there's a bigger issue there and that is that the dog's not listening to you. So there's, you know, through obedience training on all kinds of exercises, it will bleed over so that that one moment becomes a lot easier for you to manage. I noticed stuff your fathom gaming saying uh omg i did this help me undo it and i think it might be to do uh with the dogs you can still if you if you find that your dogs are like completely crazy and wild when they're together but uh, separate they're uh, much more calm and relaxed you can do do all of your training exercises the fun things you're doing with them do them separately it's going to take twice as long oh my god i did this help me undo it yeah it's going to take you twice as long but Mm -hmm. boy oh boy is it worth it you really want the your dog to see you as uh someone who brings them value who's lots of fun and who's worth listening to so uh it's not it's not an insurmountable task you can get through this and this sort of speaks it seems like a lot of people are having uh, comparable issues i've got people two, often think two that life crazy is walkers. easier when you get a second dog but in fact it's way harder yeah just as i've Ken got two crazy walkers dogs. is it better to do training separate so they don't distract each other absolutely mm-hmm. 100% and initially this is, yeah exactly that's a good point so maybe you can bring that up yeah initially it's it's better to train the dogs individually before bringing them together because you want to make sure that you know what each dog's sort of strengths and weaknesses are because if you're trying to manage both dogs together sometimes it can be really challenging especially if one dog's doing better or worse than the other you know then the other dog's like well are you talking to me are you talking to him like sure. what's going on here yeah so um yeah, keep them separate. And then um, what we start to do when we have um, young dogs, because when we say that we separate them, we do that 90% of the time. But we also practice teaching our puppies to listen while they're, while our other dogs are around. So, you know, in the house, if the other dogs are just hanging out, we have our puppy, we'll have the puppy on leash and I might do some feeding with the puppy paying attention to me while, you know, my other dog is laying out loud, down on the side over there. Or I might do some sits or some downs, or I might let the puppy wander over towards the adult dog and then I'll practice response to name and call the puppy back. So I'm teaching them how to listen with those dogs as a bit of a distraction rather than just letting them spend all of their time together and let the puppy irritate the older dog. I am managing that puppy as if they're a small child, basically. I'm, I'm, you know, walking around and following them. And then when I'm sick and tired of doing that, which happens a lot in a day, I just throw them in the crate for a little while. Let yeah. them have a little place to kind of chill out and, you know, relax. Um, re... Um, 
re-energize yeah. and then I'll kind of do the same and then I'll get the pup back out and then do something again. Yeah. It, I mean, it's not disciplinary. It's no, an opportunity for them to recharge their batteries for, to give you a break and be ready because you really do need to be firing on all cylinders, so to speak, when it comes to training a puppy like that. When, you know, you really do need all that energy and uh, you got to fake it till you make it sometimes. You need to really like be engaging and, and have lots of fun with them. Um, I like this question mm -hmm, from Abby, too. Abby NVM. How do you balance exercise, exercise needs with practicing loose leash walking in the beginning stages? Great question, Abby. What are some of the things that we often do with our dogs for with exercise? our young dogs uh, for exercise? Like I mentioned before, we don't take our young dogs and by young, I mean like under seven months, would you say six months? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Under six months, we don't take our do those dogs for walks quite yet. Um, we might walk, like teach them walking, but we might like stay on our driveway <laughs> rather than like go in the street. But the other things that we do, we do a lot of things actually. Um, my dogs typically learn to retrieve before they ever learn to walk on a leash. Um, we do restraint recalls where like one of us will hold the dog. Yeah. The other one will sort of lead out 10 yep. to 20 feet and we'll call the dog to come or we'll call their name and then we'll take off and run away and let the puppy chase and then we'll give them lots of treats when they catch us or a lot of our dogs like to play tug of war so we'll have a little short game of tug we'll practice back and forth we do trick training we do uh, playing with the dog um, all of the choices that we make though are all things that we do with the dog together so we don't right. take our dogs places and let them go and run around and ignore us we don't just let them be free in the backyard on their own all of the exercise that we give them is things that are building value for ourselves and teaching the puppy that doing things with us is super, super fun. And that really helps all of the other obedience skills that we do once that's established. Because you certainly have to exercise the puppies, absolutely. Yes. Otherwise, they're crazy. Yeah. Um, but those are a couple of things that we do to do that. For sure. Um, our uh, I, A huge thank you to SD Cruiser. So yes, I, thank you. I sort of, a great job. Yeah, I just compelled them to do uh, our, our moderation because things were getting um, wild and crazy. So I really appreciate the effort that he's been putting into our chat. He's a longtime train station uh, uh, visitor and uh we thank you for everything that you're doing for today. missing dan the man tonight yeah my um uh, sd cruiser says my new puppy got used to my older dog being around she's fine with him but when he's not around she gets really skittish never thought of that happening mm -hmm. trying to fix it now yeah and some of the yeah, uh some of the things yeah for sure some of the i think sd cruiser is pretty on it uh f from some of the comments and things from before but um something you can do is lots of confidence building like do lots of independent stuff in situations it might be a new environment maybe it's somewhere that you can be successful but it's just but you. But don't push it too quickly, exactly. especially if you have a dog that's a bit nervous or skittish. Absolutely. You want to do anything that you're trying to build confidence very gradually yep. and let the dog let you know dictate when, the pace yeah when it's maybe a bit too overwhelming and if yeah. you're finding that's happening you know dial it back a little bit yep for sure karen gsd lover who's joined us before welcome back it's uh, my gsd struggles with eye contact even after doing eye contact exercises does he not see me as valuable what else can i do so this is uh this is part i'm going to go back to this i'm going to go back to our uh, thing uh, so you've worked through maybe the teach part, Karen, and uh, maybe even some of the rehearse. But remember, if you skip steps, if you jump from one thing to the next and it's too fast and you're not being successful, then it's a simple process to just take a step back. You have to do maybe more rehearsal. Maybe you need to work on some of those look at me exercises in these new environments. I talked a little bit the last show or a couple of shows ago about um, some of the Pavlov experiments and an interesting fact that it's you guys are going to jump in on but a lot of people don't know about is that when Pavlov tried to demonstrate for his um, uh, colleagues what he discovered about that salivation um, he'd bring them into the room and he's like you guys got to see this of course he said it in Russian but uh, and the dogs <laughs> didn't elicit the same response because dogs have this built in and he called it an investigatory reflex which we know it's not necessarily a reflex but it's a response that they have to change in, in their environment so common and that's why rehearsal is so important whenever you're teaching a new skill for anybody who's training a dog out there you need to move these exercises around you need to show your dog in an environment where they're for sure to be successful mm. you need to teach them what the behavior is and then you 
you need to try it out in more challenging situations. Maybe, maybe we start in the train station with our next puppy. We start an exercise in the train station and then maybe we go to uh, the backyard and then we go to uh, the training hall, but we're, we're building on these skills. We're really making sure that our puppy understands that no matter what the environment is, this is my expectation and here's how I'm going to make you successful Mm -hmm. for them to truly understand the skill. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. Um, okay, let's go. So, uh, Gibrant Martinez, Gibrant Martinez, my dog doesn't want to walk when I get him on leash. What do I do then? And this is, talks a little bit about, uh, what if your dog doesn't want food? So, so what are the, some of the supportive things that we do for a dog that's not really? It's really hard to answer that question, um, unless we know why. Why does the dog not want to walk? Are they a little bit worried and overwhelmed by the scenario that you're walking them in? Is it like the loud noises of the trucks? Is there, you know, too much going on that the dog is overwhelmed? Or I've seen some like bigger breeds like Bernese Mountain Dogs and stuff literally just plop down and be like, nope, not doing it. (laughs) And they kind of realize that their strength can get them to avoid things. So it's really hard to answer not knowing not knowing why it's happening. Um, I would say the most common thing that, that the dogs will do is because they're nervous or they're apprehensive about something. Um, so there's a couple of things you can do. You can certainly try to coax the dog with a bit of food. You could try to practice your walking exercises in a different environment. I feel like that's sort of the theme of the day. Yeah. Um, maybe just in your house, see how that goes. Like where where is this happening? most commonly um and then the other thing you can kind of do is use a pulse and release action on the on the leash on the collar so if uh, my dog stops to, uh to you know doesn't want to walk anymore rather than pulling which the dog's just going to resist i'm basically going to pull and release pull and release pull and release and when you get to the release part a lot of dogs will sort of move towards you and that's your ticket to say yay that's it and sort of encourage them to to get going and get walking um but again why is it happening and um, then go from there on the solution. Yeah, so environment is key there and really digging down to the why. Um, oh, shoot, I removed it from the queue. So QWER2122 has asked a question about socialization. And, uh, oh, Yay! Beth Dora drops a super chat. She's lighting up the train station. Here we go. Oh, thank you, Beth. Beth. <laughs> We're going to have to get another... Um, Kong for the for the shelf. Thank you very much, Beth. We do appreciate it. And you're lighting up the train station. I changed the lights, Beth. I don't know whether you noticed that, but now they're blue on top, and uh, I think it's even more exciting when we when someone drops a super <laughs> chat. So, so much. thank you very very we much, really Beth. Really appreciate that. I'll, uh, I'll have to uh, get an even more exciting. Um, thing animation on screen for next time. I like the swimming corgi. Yeah, I know. I, you know. What? I feel like I've become like. I've come. We're gonna have to. I we're gonna have to name. Now. We're gonna have to name the corgi. Mm, I don't know. Maybe you guys can help us out. Name. I'm not really sure what would be a great name for that dog. Um, so uh, Q W E R two one two two has uh, asked a question about socialization and doesn't want to be uh, he or she doesn't want to be too vigilant. Um, is there anything to do other than slowly getting closer and closer over time over the course of many walks, treating and making positive association at six months? What should I expect? So. When you mentioned you don't you don't want to be hyper vigilant, um, I would be I would be quite insistent that my dog uh, remains in at my side, that my dog comes when called, and I'm going to be using something like a long line or a leash uh, until until I'm 100% sure that I'm going to get a great response. I'm going to have a long line on them, and I think part of it is I'm not sure whether it's a recall or just walking that you've asked about, especially with a husky. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's still working on being on proximity of other dogs without becoming hyper uh, without becoming hyper vigilant. Is there any techniques? So yeah, a part of this is going to be changing direction. Yeah, changing direction is going to be super helpful. Mm-hmm. Part of this is again uh, your behavior too. Um, so you know, this way with me, and then you make a turn, and then lots of praise. I like the idea, and it's it's so hard to tell over YouTube. You know, this is something occasionally we have to deal with something like this in our online training classes, but it's hard to know over YouTube exactly what's going on here because we can't see it, but um, I like That's why it. we like our online classes because you can video it and then yeah. we can watch video and for, be able to tell you for exactly. For sure, for sure. But in this instance, I like the idea, at least you, I, I, I love that it's recognized, that mm-hmm. the dog's ch- ch- behavior has changed, that there's something yeah. changing. Um, and, and you do need to make sure, you know, I might change direction, uh, uh, lots of praise. I mean, it's hard to, I, can, I, I don't want to give you any specific information because I don't know the dog very well, but um, it sounds like you're identifying the problem, redirect and then praise once you get them uh, um on their way. So Jessica Spade, do Can I ask you a quick unrelated question? Yes. Is that noise the furnace or rain? 
That's Sever it's Severus. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um, do you let passers by uh, pet pet the dogs on walks? And this is actually a great question mm. because it's a separate skill. Yeah. Um, sometimes, sometimes not. Uh, if I do let somebody pet my dog on a walk, um, I will often encourage my dog to sit first so that my dog's not going to jump on them, and then I only let them. Um, be patted by somebody if they can hold the sit on a loose leash. I don't really care if they pay attention to me. They're welcome to pay attention to the person that wants to pet them. But if they're like wiggling and jumping and sort of being a little bit crazy, then I then I won't let them be patted because I don't want them to be reinforced in, in that moment. But um, that's actually a drill, an exercise that we do in our classes and in our training. Uh, we call it sit and accept praise. So it means that the dogs basically hold a sit while somebody practices coming up and petting and we condition the dogs in our classes to hold a sit while the instructors and people come up to pet them and we reward the dog for maintaining a sit so that when people do want to greet your dog the dogs have a better idea of, of what's expected of them we want dogs to be friendly we want them to be acceptant of people coming to say hi to them um, but we also don't want them you know jumping and pulling on everyone that they see and then also you need to consider the dog i have a, a border collie a very young border collie and um she can be a little bit nervous of, of some people so i tip for her i don't let people stop and pet her um, unless it's someone that she knows or unless she's feeling confident in this situation because i don't want her rehearsing being worried about around people i want to try and build her confidence up so it sort of depends but the long story short make sure that if you are allowing it that you feel really good about the behavior that your dog's portraying at the time for sure i just wanted to and I, maybe you read this i didn't see it but beth says you guys are great and i learned so much from you both just want to know i appreciate all you do uh, help uh, to help me uh, be a better dog owner that's really really nice yeah, thank you thanks, very much beth. much beth it's um it's so exciting that's we, our goal yeah so for we're sure so glad that for that sure happens. it's so nice when we get to you know hear from people all over the world i mean we're getting comments and questions from people all over the world about their dogs and um it's so nice occasionally you know to hear of the, some of these success stories uh that you guys follow up with so we really really appreciate that from you guys i want to uh, i used the, the roll call train before but it was so much fun the first time i wanted to use it again because i don't want us to miss an opportunity everybody look at the size of Ken versus yeah. the size of the yeah. train. I'm actually pretty impressed. Yeah, well, good job, honey. That I was able to do that. Look at look at how much yeah. fun that is. And you know what the other neat part is? Is I think there's a train audio thing that I hooked up with. That I I don't know. Whatever. I'm I'm pumped. What's really important here is that uh, we had this opportunity to sit down with you. I want to thank you, you for joining us. Great questions. Great tonight. questions. Yeah, and join us again next week at 7:30 on Thursday night for another episode of the Train Station, where uh, I'm just going to sit here and toot the whole time. Please, please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> if this is your first time on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We publish new videos every single week to help you to have a well-behaved four-legged family member. Huge thank you to Beth Dorr for the super chat. Huge thank you to SD Cruiser for joining us. Thank you. He, uh, made, uh, he was made a moderator tonight, did an amazing job just sitting at work. So I'm, uh, I'm so excited that you could join we us. We appreciate that. Thank you. For <laughs> sure. Um, but again, f for all of you that uh, joined us here tonight, I want to thank you guys for watching. I'm Ken. I'm Kale. I want to wish you happy training. Bye for now. See ya.